uh, when I first knew about you know, MySpace. Were, was there a period where during that, being that you're in such a high profile profession, where that, that the teams would set you aside and give training on things to look out for from a risk management standpoint because of everybody wanting to kind of put their hands into your pockets or even maybe trying to dupe you out of, you know, you know, your connections and, and that type of stuff. Is that, is that anything that they had on their tape on their plate? Like I'm sure that they do now. No, you know, at that time, again, cause it was so new. There wasn't any talk about it. No one really mentioned it. Now, of course, today they have people come in and talk about social media practices how to you know interact with people? How at the minute you hit that send or that post button, everybody in the world can see it. So okay. trying to educate guys, <laughs> not trying, educating guys on how important it is to understand the ramifications of social media. They're doing a really good job of that. Awesome. Nice. Hey, Marcus, and once again, pleasure to meet you. I, I, I followed a little bit of your story and, and read back on, on some of the things and, and your your history as far as being a business owner and, and some of the, the challenges that you went through. Um, I'm going to deviate a little bit off of the, the cybersecurity path because I, I really like the story um, of the grit and the determination that it took for you to, you know, uh, transition out of one thing into another and then to, to fail and then to come back and everything else like that. Can you touch on that just a little bit uh, for, for the people that don't know who you are and your story and, and kind of how you you uh, persevere through the different challenges that you've had to experience through life? Yeah, so I ended up retired from the National Football League in that 08 season, 07, 08 season. I ended up having a really hard time for about six months with alcohol issues, addiction, nightlife, gambling, because I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a strategy for my life. I then ended up getting through that process, through those hard times. I started Caden Premier Enterprises, and Caden Premier Enterprises was my construction firm that I started. Company grew, had a lot of success, had a lot of great things happening. But unfortunately, the company grew, so did my ego, AJ. And because of that, I lost my, my best employees. I started to get very just pompous, very arrogant. And I ended up losing my eight-figure year construction company. It took me about five and a half years to build it. I lost it in about 90 days approximately. And I ended up moving to Raleigh, North Carolina in April 2013, broke, uh, preparing to file a bankruptcy. I was so broke, I couldn't even pay the bankruptcy off. I owed $3,300 to my bankruptcy attorney. It took me almost a year to pay that off because I had no resources, no finances, no credit, lost it all. Home foreclosed on, car repossessed, both in the same day. Moved down here. I ended up getting a job at Merrill Lynch for a short time, got fired. I was working for a construction company. The next day after I got fired from Merrill Lynch, got fired from that job in five days because they shut down, they shut down the sales parts store. I'm out of a job. The only job I could get was a custodial janitorial worker working for $8.25 an hour on the graveyard shift, 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. And I ended up having what I call my rock bottom, spoiled milk moment of clarity where somebody's trash, rotten meat, nasty, protruding, horrible garbage got over my body, my skin, and my clothes. And that was my wake up call for me to realize, wow, if I don't get my life back together today, I'm going to be right here on this curb, right here, having my story.